Okay, you hear colleagues. We are glad to see you again. So we continue our conference, which we have every week. And today our speaker is Timur Nasibolo from Sobol Fields of Mathematics, Novosibirsk. And he will tell us about virtual quando for links in land spaces. So please welcome. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a talk here. So, and second, I would like to thank all the participants for coming to listen to my talk. So, yeah, I very appreciate it. Uh, the title of my talk today is Virtual Quando for Links in Land Spaces, and uh, this talk is based on joint work with Alessia Catabriga from University of Bologna. And uh, we got the results, which I will uh, speak about in this talk, a couple of years ago. So, and the, even the paper is already published. So the results are not, not super recent, yeah, but I just realized that I never uh, had a talk about these results. And uh, up to my opinion, these results are, uh, yeah, quite, interesting and as for me the audience of this conference is perfect for these results that's why i decided to tell about it um, here so my talk uh, if i understand correct i have more or less 50 minutes yes and i will slowly go from some things which everybody knows so maybe it will be either very clear part or a bit boring part then through something which is less common i will go to the subject of, of the talk so maybe more or less from the middle of the talk, I will speak about uh, new things, new for majority of the listeners. And I will start from some common things, from links in the three sphere. And here, yeah, I wrote the definition of the link in a three sphere. So let n be a positive integer, and then n component link L in the three sphere is an embedding of n disjoint circles to the three sphere. So um, it's a yeah, very known definition. And the two links in this three sphere are said to be equivalent if there exists a preserving orientation homeomorphism phi of S3, which maps one of these links to another. Uh, it means that yeah, one link can be smoothly transformed to another without self-intersecting. And one of the main uh, problems in node theory or maybe the main problem is so-called not recognition problem. Uh, this problem uh, asks to construct an algorithm which for two given links, L1 and L2, says if these links are equivalent or not. So it's just a problem of defining if two links are equivalent. And if you have two links, then if you want to prove that they're equivalent, it's, uh, it's clear what to do. You just can use definition, yeah, and yeah, you can um, try to construct a homeomorphism which maps homeomorphism of three sphere, which maps one link to another. It's clear what to do, but of course it's not clear how to do it, but at least it's clear what to do. Uh, but if uh, you want to prove that two links are not equivalent, then it's difficult to use definition, and the usual approach is to construct invariants for links. So let, let me give a definition of an invariant. So let S be an arbitrary set, then the map F from the set of all links to this fixed set S is called S valued not invariant or link invariant. If for any two equivalent links, the values uh, of this map F on these links uh, is the same. So the map is called invariant if the values of equivalent links are the same. And here I want to underline that this word the same is really connected with this set. Uh, because if S is the set of integers, then the same means equal. If S is the set of groups, then um, this word means isomorphic. So the same is really something which is about elements of S. And usually um, invariants must satisfy like three conditions. I mean, if I want to call an invariant good, uh, this invariant should satisfy three conditions. First, it 
must be easy to calculate the value f of l on any link. Second, for two given links, it must be easy to compare these values. And the third, this invariant should be, let's say, powerful. So it must be able to distinguish enough links. Perfectly all links which are not equivalent, this invariant should distinguish. So I will say that an invariant is good if it's easy to calculate the value of this invariant on a given link, it's easy to compare this, uh, the values of this invariant on different links, and this invariant is powerful. And of course, it's clear uh, like, uh, that uh, it's difficult or it's impossible to find an, an invariant which satisfies all three of these conditions. So usually it's either easy to, to compare or it can distinguish a lot of links or like there are no invariants which can satisfy all of these conditions. And in this talk, I will focus on the power of invariant. So I will mostly try to think about invariant which distinguish a lot of links. It doesn't matter how difficult to calculate it or how difficult to compare it. So, and now, as I said, yeah, at first I will speak about some common things. Uh, one invariant, um, classical invariant for links in the three sphere is the fundamental uh, group of the link. It's fundamental group of the complement of the link in S3. I will denote it by G of L. And it is an invariant. And it's very easy to calculate the value of this uh, invariant on a given link. So let me have some link. It's a trefoil knot. It's not a link, it's a link diagram. So, and if you want uh, to calculate the value of the group, you just need to label the arcs of this diagram. Just, yeah, arcs are some parts of the diagram which go from one underpass to another underpass for all of them. And then you write a group with generators which are labels on the arcs and relations which can be written from the crossings of the diagram. So if you have a crossing and the labels uh, near this crossing look like this, then you add this relation. Y inverse x, y is equal to z. So it's like x, the right part, conjugate by the overpass is equal to the left uh, <coughs> part. So if you want to write the fundamental group, then just label the arcs and write a, a group with the number of uh, generators equal to the number of arcs and the number of relations equal to the number of crossings. And for example, yeah, for the trefoil knot, uh, all of you know that the group has three generators, three arcs, and three relations, because three crossings. Yeah, you can easily check that these <coughs> relations are like this relation for this link. Um, a knot, a gr group of, an, of a link, is a good invariant, however, it do doesn't distinguish all invariants, uh, all links. Uh, in particular, there are two non-equivalent nodes which have isomorphic fundamental group. And there is a better invariant called the quandal of a link. And here I give a definition of uh, just a quandal. So quandal Q is an algebraic system with one binary algebraic operation, which I denoted by star. And this uh, algebraic system uh, satisfies three axioms. First axiom says that x star x is equal to x for all x from q. Second axiom says that the map Sx, where x is a fixed element of q, this map which maps y to y star x is a bijection of q. And uh, the third axiom says that x star y star z is equal to x star z star y star z, star z for all x, y, and z. Um, this operation says that, yeah, this operation star, this uh, axiom says that this operation star is in some sense uh, distributive with respect to itself. So, and yet yeah, another name of this algebraic system is because of this axiom is distributed groupoid and it was introduced by David Joyce and Sergei Matveev, yeah, who is listening this talk. Without him, we would not have this talk. So, 
and there is a way how to a given uh, link to introduce a quandle. Uh, again, if you want to 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 a given link to by a given link introduce a quandle, again label the arcs of the link and write a quandle again by generators and relations and generators as in the case of group are labels on the arcs and relations are yeah this x star y is equal to z near all crossings here the same we just look to the overpass uh, and we look what is on the right x star overpass star y what is on the left z. so and this will be a quandle which is constructed by a link yeah, and quandles can be given by generators and uh, relations and this quandle is an invariant of links and uh, so here uh, i gave a uh, um, algebraic definition of quandle but it also has <clears throat> a geometric interpretation similar as fundamental group well, you know that uh, fundamental group is a group yeah, which is generated, uh, not generated, the elements of which are loops from some base points, which go from this base point and come back. And if you want to multiply two loops, you need to go first from one, uh, the first loop, and then the second loop. Quandle also has geometric interpretation. Um, so if you have a link, then look to the tubular neighborhood of this link and then look to the paths which go from some fixed by, by base points to the boundary of this tubular neighborhood, neighborhood. So and the elements of the uh, quandle of a link are these paths. And if you want to find a product, this star, if you want to find B star A, then you need first to go by path B then go around the two tubular neighborhood, come back to the base point, and then go to the, yeah, along the second path. So their product will be like a path which go from base, base point, go around uh, the tubular, yeah, the tube here, and then go near the second. So it's geometric interpretation of quandle. And what is nice about quandles is that quandle is an almost complete invariant. Uh, more precisely, uh, the following theorem holds. So let L1 and L2 be two links in, in the three-dimensional sphere. Then the quandle of Q, quandle of the first link and quandle of the second link are isomorphic if and only if these links are weakly equivalent. It means that either L1 is equivalent to L2 or L1 is equivalent to the link which is obtained from L2 simultaneously by reverse orientation and mirror image. And this result was introduced by David Joyce and Sergei Matei independently in 1982. So, and this invariant, this quantum invariant is, let's say, the most powerful known invariant. I mean, you know, of course, uh, in some sense, reasonable invariant. Of course, you have an equivalence class of a link, which is a complete invariant, but it's impossible to work with it. So, Quandle is, let's say, the most invariant, the most powerful invariant with which you can work. Um, that's all about classical links and about the part which all of you, or majority of you, know. And now I will go to the um, let's say less common things, but anyway, very popular to virtual links. So virtual links uh, have less uh, convenient for explanation, geometric interpretation, and it's easier to explain what are virtual links in terms of virtual link diagrams. So, and here I depicted three virtual link diagrams and on these three examples, yeah, I will explain what are virtual links. So. Yeah, for me, virtual link and the virtual link diagram is, is the same thing. So virtual link diagram looks very similar to classical link diagram. Um, it has like crossings which are classical, 
where you have uh, some uh, part of the diagram which goes over another and some under, but there is another type of crossing called virtual crossing, and that's all the difference between virtual uh, link diagrams and classical link diagrams. And geometrically, this virtual crossing it's a kind of defect of depicting a diagram. So uh, it's like um, if you speak about graphs. So it's kind of intersection of oh, sorry of edges of of the graph. So but uh, we just fixed that virtual link diagram is something very similar to classical link diagram, but which has two types of crossing. One type one crossing is uh, um, classical, and another is, is virtual. So in here we have virtual trefoil uh, not virtual hop link and virtual Borromean rings. So virtual links were uh, introduced by Louis Kaufman in the late 90s and uh, I would say that it's very popular uh, topic now for study. So um, we defined naturally an equivalence relation between links, uh, classical links, but uh, since we work with virtual links as with the uh, diagrams, then uh, we have also to define an equivalence relation on virtual links or as on diagrams. So, and here I give this definition. So, we say that two virtual node diagrams or link diagrams are equivalent if one of these diagrams can be transformed to another one by a finite sequence of moves which depicted below. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves. These moves are called um, generalized randomized moves. Yeah, this definition means that, uh, yeah, if you, two links are equivalent, if you can uh, transform one link to another step by step, changing only a small neighborhood of the diagram. So like if you have this kind of, uh, yeah, this type on the diagram, then you can change it by this and all of these diagrams. Um, and uh, as we already noticed, virtual link diagrams are very similar to classical link diagrams, but just by their appearance, how they look like. In particular, if a virtual link diagram doesn't have virtual crossings, it looks exactly the same as classical link diagram. And uh, Gusarov, Polyak, and Viro uh, proved that it, they don't just look like classical link diagrams. They're exactly classical link diagrams. So this theorem says that if we have two virtual links, uh, which have only classical crossings, so they don't have virtual crossings, then these uh, link diagrams are equivalent as virtual diagrams. So meaning by this definition. Then they're equivalent as classical uh, link diagrams. It is they represent equivalent classical links. So in other words, this uh, theorem says that um, that classical nodes, classical links, like are sitting inside virtual links. So, and classical node theory is kind of inside is less general than virtual node theory. From this point, it's of course important to study node recognition problem for virtual links because if you can solve it then you can uh, solve it in, in for classical links. And the most common way of, of uh, working on this problem is to construct invariants. And uh, since we already know that the quandal for classical links is a kind of, um, let's say the most powerful invariant for classical links, then it's reasonable to try to generalize this quandal to virtual links. And uh, the first try was done by Louis Kaufman in his original paper. And he introduced a way how to extend the definition of quantum from classical links to virtual links. And he did it here just from the diagram. So if, we, if you have a virtual link diagram, for example, as on this uh, virtual tree for uh, then if you want, 
So mm -hmm. then if you want to um, construct a um, quandle of this virtual link, then uh, just label the long arcs of the diagram. And what is the long arc? It's as in classical uh, case, yeah, it's a part of the diagram going from one underpass to another underpass. For example, here, the long diagram is going from here, from one underpass, then going through virtual crossing, and then going to another underpass. And here, the second. So it's long arcs. They just go through virtual crossings. And if you want to write this quandle introduced by Kaufman, then you just need to write a quandle with generators, which are labels on these uh, long arcs, and relations which are written only from classical crossings in completely the same manner as in a classical case. So in this quandle, the number of generators is equal to the number of uh, long arcs, and the number, the number of relations is equal to the number of classical crossings. So, and for example, for this virtual trefoil, we have only two long arcs, this one, x1, and this is the second. And we have two relations because we have only two classical processes. So this relation x2 star x1 is equal to x1 is written from this crossing and uh, x1 star x1 is equal to x2 from this crossing. Yeah, if we carefully look to this uh, quandle and if we remember the uh, axioms of quandle, then we see that this uh, equation, this uh, equality says that x1 is equal to x2 because x star x is equal to x for all x in a quantum. So uh, therefore this, yeah, from this we have x1 is equal to x2. This means just in this case x1 is equal to x1. It means that this quantum with this generate, these generators and these relations has only one element x1. What is the conclusion from this uh, definition of a quandle? Is that despite the fact that a quandle of a link is um, very good and very, and uh, yeah, maybe it's not very correct to say, but I will say this way, uh, that it's the most powerful invariant for classical links, the quandle introduced by Kaufman is, is not the same good as uh, Quandle for classical links because it even can distinguish virtual trefoil from the unknown. But of course, we need to prove that virtual trefoil is not equivalent to unknown, but it's true, it's not equivalent to the unknown. But of course, this invariant, this quandle, it still distinguishes all, all, classical, all classical links. So in order to avoid this problem, uh, that yeah, quandle for virtual links doesn't uh, distinguish a lot of virtual links. It, it distinguish all classical links up to weak equivalents, but yeah, it can distinguish some even even virtual triple from the unknown. So in order to avoid this, uh, Vasily Mantrov introduced so-called virtual quandle for virtual links. So it's very reasonable why he call it virtual quandle because he constructs it for virtual links. So when, let me give a definition. A virtual quandle BQ is an algebraic system with two operations. One of them is uh, binary, which is denoted by star, and the second one is unary and denoted by F. And this algebraic system must satisfy um, three axioms. The first axiom is that if we fix only the binary operation, then we have a quandle. So, and this is yeah, the three axioms which we already uh, said. Second axiom is that the map X, uh, the map which maps, yeah, the map F, which maps X to F of X, is just by ejection on this Q. And the third axiom is that F of X star Y is equal to F of X star F of Y. In other words, a virtual quandle is, let's say, a quandle Q star and it's a homomorphism. So that is a virtual quandle. And Vasily Mantorov suggested a way how to a given virtual link construct a virtual bundle. And uh, it's um, already, um, 
more general invariant that one will introduce by Louis Kaufman. So, and he suggested the following way. Yeah, the same as quandals can, groups can be given by generators and relations. Quandals can be given by generators and relations and uh, virtual quandal also can be given by generators and relations. It's like the classical procedure. All algebraic systems can be given by generators and relations. What is the way how to construct generators and relations of the virtual quandal uh, introduced by Mantor? First, label all the semi-arcs of uh, the diagram. What is a semi-arc? Semi-arc on the diagram is a part of the diagram which goes from one crossing to another crossing. Like, uh, it doesn't matter which crossing, virtual or classical, it doesn't matter where underpass is, where overpass is, it, it, it doesn't matter. So, in this case of virtual trefoil, we have one, two, three, four, five, six semi arcs. And uh, now the relations we, which we write, they are um, written not only from classical crossings, but also from virtual crossings. So um, the relations which can be written from classical crossings look like this. So if we have um, Yeah, here I have a mistake on this picture. So what, how the uh, how relations in classical crossings look like? So here on the right it must be T, and here it must be T because we label semi arcs. From classical crossings we have the same uh, relations as in classical case. Y is equal to here must be T. So Y is equal to T, and uh, here, x star y is equal to z. So these two relations are exactly the same as uh, in the case of uh, classical uh, quantum. And in virtual crossing, we just write that t is equal to f of, f of y. So when we go here through virtual crossing, we just write here y, here f of y. And z is equal to f minus. Uh, one f inverse of x. So when we go uh, here through virtual crossing, we count f inverse of x. Yeah, so uh, relations can be written from both crossings, classical and virtual. So it, it means that the number of uh, generators is equal to the number of semi arcs, and the number of uh, relations is equal to the number of crossings. Uh, both classical and virtual multiplied by two because each crossing gives gives two um, relations. So this virtual quantum already can distinguish virtual trefoil from the unknown. So and it's more general than quantum introduced by um, Louis Kaufman, and it's more powerful. But of course, it's quite difficult to understand if two uh, virtual quandals are um, equi are isomorphic or no, but yeah, we don't fix on it. We, we are not interesting in this talk if the invariant is, is easy to to compare. There are some ways, but yeah. so uh, that's all I wanted to say about uh, links, virtual links. And now I go to the yeah exactly to the topic of my talk about links in lens spaces. And first of all, I want to give yeah, a definition of the lens space and how will I work with links in lens spaces. So let PQ be co-prime integers. How do I think about the lens space? So for me, lens space is a quotient of the three-dimensional ball uh, by the equivalence relation on the boundary. And this equivalence relation is given by this uh, relation any point on boundary is equal to yeah this superposition of maps uh, on x let me explain what is f3 and what is gpq so here we have three dimensional ball and we have this point x on uh, boundary this map gpq means rotation counterclockwise 
by the angle 2 pi q over p. And this map, so under this, it, this point x just rotates. And maps f3 just is mirror image with respect to the plane, yeah, z, x3 equals to zero. So we first go this point rotation and then go down. So, and the quotient of the free ball by, by this equation, in other words, we glue this point with this point and yeah, for all points on the boundary, the quotient is the length space. Uh, if you prefer to speak about um, three manifolds in terms of surgery, then uh, uh, the length space can be obtained by P over Q rational surgery on the unknot in the three sphere. It means that um, it means that this length space can be obtained from the three sphere if we cut from this uh, tubular neighborhood from the unknot, and then instead of this uh, tubular neighborhood, so it's instead of this field torus. We glue inside again a field torus, but we identify um, this unknot which we had. Yeah, it's torus. Uh, the meridian we identify with P over PQ torus knot. It's just like twisted foliated uh, torus. It's like, and that is the uh, length space using surgery. And uh, some people study links in land spaces, and the definition of a link in land space is the same as the definition of link in the three dimensional sphere. Uh, an n component link is an embedding of n disjoint circles uh, to this um, land space. And uh, these links in land spaces have applications. And now I have to apologize, maybe. It's like kind of uh, yeah the moment of shame for me. Uh, these links in land spaces have applications, and I really tried to understand these applications, but yeah, I didn't really succeed. So it could be the most interesting part for some you know, listeners, but maybe yeah, I failed a bit and I didn't succeed to really understand the applications. I will just cite two two two, two papers. The first paper uh, says about applications for uh, DNA recombination. So it's about biology and applications. Yeah, it's really difficult. It was difficult for me. I didn't understand the, how, how the links are applied because this paper cites another paper. So it's kind of difficult, yeah. And the second is about links and length spaces and topological strings. So it's about applications of links and length spaces in physics. So what I can say here, yeah, I see two options. The first option is that I will study the applications, I will understand it, and then if I will have a possibility next time, I will. I promise that I will say more about applications. And the second option, you see these papers are quite recent, and if this uh, conference is continuing, uh, then uh, if the organizers can invite some of these guys to give a talk, I will be very grateful. So, but now I just yeah, apologize that I didn't explain uh, applications in details and I will go further the links and land spaces. So, how to work with links and land spaces? So, when we, when we were working, when we work with the classical links or when we work with the virtual links, we usually work with diagrams. And to work with it in terms of, yeah, using definition is impossible. And the same thing is with links in land spaces. So, and in order to um, understand how to depict a link, a diagram for link in, in uh, land space, it's uh, convenient to think about land space as about original P over Q surgery in S3. Of course, there are several ways several types of diagrams for links and land spaces. And uh, one of them, yeah, work uses this surgery. So again, land space is uh, obtained from uh, the three sphere uh, by rational P over Q surgery along unknot. So it's depicted here, unknot. 
and the regional pure acute surgery is, is depicted here. So now on this slide, the lens space is depicted diagrammatically. How to write a diagram, uh, how to depict a link diagram here? We just need to add a diagram. That's all. So this kind of depicting a diagram for a link in lens space is called mixed link diagram. So we have here exactly a diagram and a surgery link. And of course, it's, uh, to work with these diagrams, yeah, you need to know some stuff because there, are, there is a difficult way to explain which diagrams are equivalent. There are Rydemeister moves. So it's one way of depicting diagrams, to depict mixed link diagrams. But if you look to this surgery link and then look to the homeomorphism of S3, which maps this link to the line, then we can depict this diagram like this. We just change this, this surgery link by a line. And yeah, this puncture uh, depicts this line. This way of um, uh, introducing links in lens spaces is called punctured link diagram. Um, but here, if I take, yeah, and also some people work with links in lens spaces using punctured link diagram, there are Rydemeister moves on them, and so on. If from this puncture, I will put a line and then cut along this line, this link, and this, then move these two parts to the left and then these two parts to the right, then I will have like a band, and then inside this band, I have uh, my a link. It's also a way to depict links in lens spaces, and this uh, way is called band diagram of a link. And in this talk, I will work with links in lens spaces in terms of band diagrams. So this is a general way of a band diagram. So here we have some number of points on the left, the same number of points on the right, and inside of this some tangle, which yeah, here they can somehow tangle. And um, since lens space yeah, is a manifold, there is a natural uh, definition of homeomorphisms and so on. It's there is a natural geometric uh, definition of equivalence of two links. We say that two links L1, L2 in the lens space are equivalent if there is a preserving orientation for homeomorphism phi of the lens space which maps one link to another. The same definition as in S3, but we changed S3 by uh, lens space. And since in this talk we speak about lens space, uh, links in lens spaces uh, as about band diagrams, there is a way uh, how to understand if two links yeah, there is a so-called yeah analog of Rademeister theorem for links in that space. It's a theorem. I didn't wrote the author, but I'm not sure if. Yeah, sorry. I think that it's Enrico Manfredi who proved this theorem, but maybe he he was wasn't alone who proved it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly who is the author. So he says that two band diagrams represent equivalent links in LP1. Here I speak about links in LP1. Uh, of course, he proved the theorem in general. Yeah, I will give a short comment after I finish the uh, yeah, theorem. So two band diagrams represent equivalent links in LP1. If one of these diagrams can be transformed to another one by a finite sequence of moves, moves which, depict, which are depicted here. So here we have three uh, classical Rademeister moves. One move uh, which says that if you have like this kind of arc, which is close to the border of the band, then we can push this uh, part through the band. Yeah, here. We just move it to the line and add it onto the left. So these four moves are local. So they are near some small, they are in some neighborhood, small neighborhood of the diagram. And one additional move, which said, which uh, yeah, it's called slide move. It maps band diagram of this form to the band diagram of this form. 
And this move is not local, it's global. So it doesn't change a small neighborhood of the diagram, it changes the diagram completely. Yeah, and why uh, I said about here LP1, of course the theorem is proved for all links and land spaces, LPQ, but um, this local move, this global move looks more difficult just. That's why I speak about links in LP1. And uh, for me in this talk, uh, this case is the most important links in LP1 because the main theorem which I'm going to formulate is about links in LP1. Um, that is the, the definition of equivalent links, like when uh, two band diagrams represent equivalent links. Links. They represent equivalent links if and only if one of these diagrams can be transformed to another by this pose. And of course, if we have an equivalence relation, we have a knot recognition problem. And one of the main uh, tools to solve the knot recognition problem is to construct invariance. And there is, let's say, classical way of constructing invariance for links and length spaces. It uses the universal cover of length of uh, length space. So the universal cover of the length space is the three-dimensional sphere. So let pi from S3 to the length space be the universal cover map. And let F be an S-valid invariant for links in S3, not for links in length space, but for links in S3. And there is a way how to construct an invariant for links in length spaces using this invariant um, F. It says, uh, uh, yeah, this construction is given here. If you have a link, then denote by tilde f the map which maps a link L in length space to the value f of pi inverse of L. So here L is a link in length space. Pi inverse of L is the full pre-image of L and uh, it is inside S3. So the full pre-image of a link is a link. And on this link, you can uh, calculate the value f. So this map F tilde maps a link L in length space to some element of, uh, of S. And this map is an invariant for links in length space. Because yeah, pi in yours of L is an invariant and F is an invariant. And that is, let's say, a classical way of constructing links, constructing invariants for links in length spaces. A lot of invariants are constructed, let's say, using this way. And as I said, we want to speak about powerful invariants. And therefore, we already know that there is quandle for links and it's reasonable to try to uh, introduce quandle for links in length spaces. And there are two ways of constructing quandles in lens, quandles for links in length spaces. First of all, first is the way which I just introduced. Just look to the full pre-image of the link and calculate the quandle introduced by Joyce and Edmund Hill. Second option is to use geometric interpretation of a quandle, but these paths, these paths, now it's important, these paths are inside length space and these loops are inside length space, so it's like geometric interpretation of a quandle inside length space. And yeah, seems like it's different definitions of a quandle, but these two definitions are equivalent. So these two quandles are um, isomorphic. And this fact says that a quandle is not good enough and very. Why it says this? Because this definition is defined using the liftings, yeah, the liftings of the link. So the quandle is a quandle of the lifting of, uh, of the link. It means that this quandle cannot distinguish links which have equivalent liftings, but there are non-equivalent lifting links in, in length spaces which have equivalent liftings. So it means that a quandle is not good enough. Uh, of course, it's good, it can distinguish a lot of links, but there are links which it cannot distinguish, just links which have equivalent liftings, and there are a lot of links in length spaces which have equivalent liftings. <coughs> and what we did, like we're going to, to the end, 
we introduced virtual bundle for Linux and LAN spaces. Um, it's very yeah, interesting. Um, the part about virtual links today in this presentation, I said only in order to introduce virtual bundle and the way how virtual bundles appear. In this part of the talk, I'm not going to speak about virtual links, but I will speak about virtual bundle uh, because it's just a common word. So, and how do we introduce a virtual bundle for links and link spaces? Um, we will introduce it by a diagram. As we know, the diagram of a virtual of the link and land space can be given as a band diagram. So here I depicted the arbitrary band diagram for for uh, a link in land space. So now I will explain how from this diagram to construct a virtual one. First, label the arcs of the link. What are arcs? Here, arcs is kind of um, similar to arcs for classical links. It's parts of the diagram which go from one underpass to another underpass. Underpass, you may remember that here we have some tangle, so these lines are continued somehow. So an arc is a part of the diagram which go from one underpass to another underpass or from one, let's say, left point to some underpass or from right point to some underpass or, yeah, it's possible that there is a way here from here to here. It's like from a point restricted by two points on the board. So label all the arcs. And label in, in this way that on the left, the arcs are labeled x1, x2, and so, so on, xn. So, yeah. The right uh, arcs are um, labeled by y1, y2, yn, and so on. And all the remaining uh, arcs, which are inside this part of the diagram, are labeled by z1, z2, uh, and so on, zm. Uh, of course, you understand that you understand that some arc, for example, here can go from left to the right and it will be denoted twice by x1 and y1. So it's possible that some uh, arcs are, are depicted twice. It doesn't matter. Um, and then to every right point, here we have n points, associate a sign. If this arc go uh, looks from left to the right then we will say that the sign is equal to one if the arc looks from right to the left then the arc we will say that it has a sign minus one so in what we have now we have a diagram with all arcs labeled and to each right point we have a sign plus one or minus one <clears throat> And now I will say how to define a virtual bundle by generators and relations. So as you understand, generators are, all, are labels on the arcs. So x1, x2, and so on, xn, y1, y2, and so on, yn, z1, z2, and so on, zk. And relations are, uh, yeah, there are a lot of relations which are divided into, into, let's say blocks. The first block is so-called inner relations. Uh, it includes identifications between some x1, xn, y1, yn, z1, zk, if it's necessary. As I said, some uh, arc can be labeled by two different labels. Just write the quality between them. That is identifications. It's very, very yeah, reasonable if you label the same arc using two letters, just say that these letters are equivalent. The second relations, yeah, I call them inner relations because they can be written from the inner, from the in, inner part of the, of the diagram. The second type of, of inner relations can be written from classical crossings. And how we do it, it's um, completely the same as in the case of uh, classical quantum or classical links. Uh, then 
uh, we have a group of boundary relations. Uh, it includes n relation and one special relation, which I'll explain later. What are boundary relations? So remember that points on the left, here I come back, points on the left are x1, x2, and xn, points on the right, y2, y1, y2, yn. We say that f of x, y is equal to y, i, I or i is equal to 1, and so on, n. And we add one more relation, yeah, which is looks a bit specific. You see, like here, some special sign. I will explain it later. And the uh, so called splitting relations, which also have this form. Uh, yeah, it says that this kind of relation holds. Yeah, uh, need, we just need to understand what is this uh, sign means. And it says that. Um, F has uh, order P. So we are virtual quandle for links and length spaces is a quandle which has the number of generators equals to the number of, yeah, equals to the number of uh, uh, arcs in the diagram and the number of relations. Yeah, here we have, uh, yeah, the number of relations more than the number of crosses. And in order to make it clear, I need to explain what this kind of relations mean. So what does it mean? This kind of relation, y n to the epsilon n, y n minus one to the epsilon n minus one, and so on, y one to the epsilon one is equal to one. Uh, it means that like this element, I will say that informally, this element is the same as an operator as this element. It means that x star this element is equal to x. Yeah, just we're looking to this as to the identity. Uh, to the identity. But again, what this means? It means this. So now we have already an element in the quantum. x star y n to the power epsilon n. You see y n epsilon n star y n minus one star epsilon n minus one by n minus one. So we just uh, act by y n, y n minus one, and so on, y <coughs> one. Yeah, and here we just need to remember that star uh, with one is just usual star, and star with one inverse is s y inverse of x, where s x is this um, map. Yeah, that is a definition, maybe a bit complicated, but need to look on it a bit uh, more carefully. This kind of relation, this kind of relation, I will just say that it is uh, an infinite family of relations. It means that for all x, some equality holds. That's why it like gives a lot of uh, additional relation. And what is the main result which uh, we proved? Yeah, we proved that this virtual quandle is an invariant for links in LP1, in length spaces LP1. And what is nice about this virtual quandle, first, it's better than a fundamental quandle for links, which I introduced uh, yeah, geometrically yeah, on previous slides, or yeah, using, uh, using liftings. What does it mean better? It means that it, if fundamental quantum distinguish two links, then this virtual quantum also distinguish two links. Second, this virtual quantum is able to distinguish links with equivalent lifts. Not all of them, but at least it can distinguish some links with equivalent liftings. So it makes it more useful because it can distinguish links with equivalent uh, liftings, which is like, usually doesn't work in the theory because a lot of uh, invariants are constructed using liftings. Uh, and also, it's easy to compute from the diagram. Yeah, I just wrote relations. Uh, I just wrote uh, generators and relations directly from the diagram. For example, fundamental quantum, which is written using, yeah, uh, using, uh, Liftings is this 
difficult to write directly from the diagram because you first need to write it leafly. And the last, yeah, the last thing I noticed is that up to my opinion, yeah, it's a nice idea to use something from virtual mode theory for links in land spaces because classical idea is to use something from classical mode theory for links in land spaces. But here we use something from virtual mode theory which is, yeah, is not connected with, with uh, links in land spaces. Yeah, I find it nice. Of course, it's it's uh, it not me not not me who uh, has to decide if it's a nice idea or no. But yeah, just my opinion. Uh, yeah, that's all. It's not the last slide. If you will, some of you will look to the slides of the last. I have an example. Yeah, but I think that I can stop here. Um, thank you for listening. I hope that I wasn't very annoying. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice talk. So please questions. So Timur, I have one question, Mahinder here. Hi, Mahinder. How are you? Uh, very good. I in the end of the talk I had some yeah, eye problem, but now I feel very good. Yes. Uh, uh, so what I understood, so lens space is a quotient of the three sphere by uh, some finite group, right? Cyclic group, that way you can see it. Uh, okay, at least LP1 can be thought of as S3 mod cyclic group of uh, order P. B, it's three ball by... Hello? Quotient, not sphere, but a ball. Uh, three ball, yeah, th uh, three ball, yeah. So, uh, all right. So, I mean, uh, do you think that you can uh, do something similar for like the real projective three space? It is the lens space. L21 is a projective three space. Oh, I see. So you are not a, your, a, your P is arbitrary. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if P is equal to two, then we have projective. I uh, thought you are odd primes or something. Let's say it's prime, but two is also prime. Yeah, we, this case is considered there. So projective uh, space is, is, is inside this. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So please, more questions. So Timur, do you see the any way how the kit came into realize for every free manifold? Uh, we tried, but we didn't succeed even to generalize to LPQ because um, uh, of this, uh, yeah, I will go to the, we have this move here, this move, yes, global, and even in LPQ, it's, uh, it makes a lot of problems. And if we change lens space, but an arbitrary manifold, even for yeah, cipher fiber space, it's, uh, I believe, uh, we tried with Alessia, we tried, and uh, maybe the way shouldn't be so. We, we did really calculations, uh, and uh, it was more, let's say, calculating proof. Maybe it must be more some, some greater idea should be, just calculating things is very difficult. So even for LPQ, and that is the answer, yeah, very difficult. Thank you. So maybe you can tell something about the example, how you calculate. Yeah. What we slide with example. Yeah, let me show you. I think it can be interesting for everybody. Uh, we just got an example, very easy. Uh, why we got this example? Because, uh, there is a link, uh, yeah, if we look to, for example, L41, there is a link which has uh, the same lifting to this, li to this link, but not equivalent to this, that's all. So we have a band diagram and this link. As I said, we label first all the arcs. Here we label left parts, we label right parts, here x1, x2, here y1, y2, and as I said, all the remaining we label by Z, but there are no remaining parts. All of arcs are labeled. So 
And that's why we have um, four, four generators, x1, x2, y1, y2, and uh, relations. In this line, we have relations which I can write from the inner part. x1 is equal to y2. It is because it is the same arc. Then, yeah, here, x2 to the power x1, it's just x2 star x1. I just use yeah, here exponential notion. x2 star x1 is equal to y1 is written from this crossing because what is on the right, x2 star x1 is equal to y1. Then we have points which are written from the boundary, from the border, I mean here on the left and on the right. f of x1 is equal to y1, f of x2 is equal to y2. It's everywhere we write this. And here, this relation, uh, you remember there were these numbers, epsilon one, epsilon two, and so on, epsilon n. Here we have only two points on the, on the right. And in both of these points, uh, arcs look from the left to the right. It means that epsilon one is equal to epsilon two is equal to one. That's why we write y two, y one is equal to one. And then we have these relations for all x, f x, f of x, f to the power p minus one of x, is congruent to one and f is equal to yeah f has ordered p what i notice here we have these relations x1 is equal to y2 x2 to the power x1 is equal to y1 it means that i can delete this y1 and y2 from the set of generators just everywhere changing y1 by this x2 to the power x1 and y2 by x1 just yeah as in groups if I have some relations, I can uh, write some generator from this relation. That's why I can, instead of this generator, y2, I can everywhere write x1 and delete y2. It will look like this. So these two relations, I don't write because I use them to delete uh, generators. You see, we have, we have here x1 and x2, y1 and y2 disappear. Then f of x1 is equal to x2 to the power x1. It's root here f of x1 is equal to y1, but y1 is, is this. f of x2 is equal to x1, f of x2 is equal to y2, but y2 is equal to x1. And here, yeah, here it's kind of uh, relation. You see, y2 I change by x1, but y1 I change by x2. Two star x1 at yeah it is it can be related it can be written as x2 x1 is one red one yeah it's okay. need some explanation yeah and then of course i can delete more so here for example f of x2 is equal to x1 i can delete delete uh, x1 from the set of generators and i did all of it and uh, got that if p, p is odd I have this virtual quantum, and if p is even, I have this virtual quantum. Yeah, it's uh, just calculations here I read it. So yeah, I need to look to this uh, a bit more maybe. Yeah, I, I hope that I made something uh, more clear. Or if you want, I can give more details. Yeah, but generally, how you compare to quantums? Uh, the best option, yeah, how... Like, uh, one option is just think about F as about identity, or, or just another is like, we have this virtual quantum. There is star operation and F unary operation. Uh, then forget about unary operation. Just forget, forget about it. You have Q and the star. You have a quantum. And uh, yeah, from like this, just forgetting about uh, second operation, we yeah compared it with the classical definition of quantum. Yeah, if this is your question. How did we compare virtual quantum okay. to classical quantum? Yeah, just very easy observation. Forget about F. What will you have? Okay. 
I have a related question. So uh, when you take a link in the lens space and you take the pullback of that link in the three sphere by the covering map. So you have the usual quantal of the lifted link. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you have this uh, so-called virtual quantal, which you define for this link in the lens space. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, are they related in some way? I mean, uh, we didn't try to, to find some, you know, some explicit connection, but of course they're related. Uh, yeah, yeah because, it, because the number of components and all those, uh, that will multiply by the number of sheets of the covering, no? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah they're related, but I cannot say exactly how they're related, yeah. Yeah, can I answer? Yeah. Please, more questions? Could we just show the slide number 15? Of course. This? Yeah. Okay. So just scroll down. Okay. okay, so thank you very much. So let us thank Timur again for a very interesting talk. And he promised us to explain more about the application for the next conference. Is it? <laughs> okay, and so thank you very much to everybody. And uh, next week is, is the same time we have a talk by Karimish and Sergei Alexeyenko about application of not theory in physics. So the information will be sent late, yes? It is abstract in the explicit time. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Timur.